There's a, a, a fight on this one in terms of interpretation of what is microbial problems. And so microbials are living organisms, uh, fungus and bacteria that live on the surface of, of basically everything. Now some of these things are deadly like E. coli. So things like E. coli, which we test for in cannabis, we want to see none. But what we're having problems with is having yeast issues. And yeast is something that is present in, it's really present if you're using enzymatics, because enzymatics are using yeast to do the work. And so for a lot of people who used enzymatics, it invalidated the cannabis. For a lot of people like me who use compost tea, it has the ability to invalidate your cannabis. And so what we're trying to understand is how does one take a look at other agricultural industries that use organic methodologies and find safe working levels for these things. And so the state of California standards are actually pretty good and they're pretty reasonable. And what you have is you had new standards get brought in, they call them the Berkeley standards, and those standards are based more on um, conceptual purity. And what it does is it basically renders probably 95% of the sun-grown market right out of existence. And there's this belief that these, this yeast must be, it must be terrible for you, but it's on every single piece of organic fruit, vegetable, herb that you buy. So you've been consuming tons of it your entire existence with never any issues. And so what you're having is you're having companies that are looking to generate more testing requirements to benefit the companies versus individuals trying to create standards that make sense for production models. And I think that California will actually do a pretty good job with this. I think they're going to take a look at this and realize that you can't put um, a zero living tissue count where there's nothing on the plant from an outside plant grown in the sun. And it, it, it favors an organic model or, or it favors an indoor model heavily because we can completely control everything. But the problem is, does that mean that that's really real? Does one need to have sterility on a product? Is any of my other agricultural products sterile? No. So the only thing we're talking about sterility on is cannabis. And so it doesn't really hold suit. It holds suit that somebody's going to make money on a standard. And I think that that's really how you have to look at this. It's such an issue that when we did the Golden Tarp this year, we changed the microbials to where it reflects the California, not the Berkeley standards. And we said, listen, these are the things that we're gonna work with, we're numbers that make sense. Um, if, if, it's a, if it's a toxic component like E. coli, no, it's not allowed, but on some of these yeasts and molds that are uh, prohibiting organic cultivators from getting their products, and it's, um, it's, it's impossible to conceive that that's not a healthy product. So at the Golden Tarp, what we did is we changed the requirements so that we're able to really focus on that sun-grown sector. And once we start to have some individuals who can interpret organic methodologies correctly and explain it to the people who are regulating cannabis correctly, well, we'll have this settled. But in the meantime, it's pretty difficult. So what we've done you know, here at the nursery was I, I went through a tremendous number of plants that are really tough. They let me grow them dry which means no fungal sprays, no um, compost tea sprays. And I really love using compost teas on plants because it just really boosts up the, the health of the plant overall. But because of some of these standards, I dropped it way back. I pulled out certain cultivars out of the library that I know just come up hotter. And it's because if the, if the Berkeley standard is used, it, basically, it, it almost it, it wipes out the, you know, the entire crop. And so these things just don't make any sense because they don't reflect reality. And that has to be uh, addressed. And I think that the California regulators will, and I think that they'll do a pretty good job. I don't see the situation like other states in the same way where they want to favor a, a, a buffered into a model because California has electrical problems that are just out of control, meaning no grid capacity. And who, if in, on anywhere in the world, if you didn't grow it outside, California? I mean, if you can't grow it here, where are you going to grow it? So you have this incredible opportunity to grow efficiently, effectively, agriculturally, soundly once we start to rein in the requirements for testing. Do you think, uh, do you think that um, it, it would be a good idea for some of these people who are using compost sprays and such to wash their cannabis? Would that improve their ability to pass some of these testing standards? And then, of course, um, keep super clean trim environments yeah you know I mean a lot of your a lot of your 
a lot of your yeast and mold is coming out of the dirt. So basically, if you can keep the dust down at your property, that helps a lot. And the, um, what was it? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, in terms of washing. Washing, yeah, washing. The washing. possibility of washing. You can, not with water. With, with a hydrogen peroxide solution. We can use an H2O2 solution to, and it's basically going to be like a, it's going to peel some of that surface fungal off and it can take plants that wouldn't have passed to make them pass. But the idea that you're, and, and wetting cannabis before you harvest it isn't terrible. It's, it's good to clean it off a lot of times, but to have to harvest an entire, entire crop and wash every flower, it's just, the amount of washing you're doing here is ungodly. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so it's, it's for people, the strategy that we explained this year to a lot of people was let's get into cultivars that don't require the buffer. Let's get into cultivars that don't require a lot of the, the microbial assisters, meaning things that you would add to help you work with pathogenic pressure. And so it limited the number of choices in the library to be used for the cultivators that understood what they were doing. They found stuff that didn't need any assistance. And I did the same thing. Now, I had one plant that I ran as a test, and it came up too hot for Berkeley. So it, it would be able to move under the California, but not the Berkeley standards. And so that's one that, depending on if you're trying to push it through a store that uses the Berkeley, then it would invalidate it. So I have to be able to kind of catalog what does what, when, and where. And then it lets me know, can you use the tool appropriately? And so once we get this reined in reasonably, it'll open up a tremendous number of cultivars again for usage, and it will allow us to really get these biologically driven systems up to spec to where they belong because you have to have the biology on the surface epidurally and in the root zone. And if you can do this, it works in concert to a degree that's unbelievable, and that just has to be seen as non-harmful. An organically driven apple um, is pretty healthy. I don't see why I'm so afraid of it. And then with cannabis, it should be the same, but because it's cannabis, it's looked at as something very different. And so cannabis being the single most agriculturally regulated product in human history, um, who knows? But what we know is that I, I think California is going to really look at these standards and, and rein them into reality because it, they don't make any sense right now. So you think that the not just the Berkeley standards, but the California standards need to be adjusted? California is actually not too bad. California is not too bad where they're saying the chloroform is on E. coli, all these things that you do not want to have in your products, zero. But then on yeast and mold, it's an allowable, and I want to say it comes up to like maybe 4 to 5% of the total weight by volume. You know, total weight of the product can't exceed this so much and, and count. And these are standards used from other organic, um, I say, certification industries or agencies for food production because you're, you're taking data from where? See, that's the problem with a lot of cannabis is there's never been any studies on it in a way that lets us use any kind of pesticides. So the FDA, EPA, none of these people will certify anything. So nothing could ever be tested or used and determined, hey, this is something that used here this way is a, a safe for human consumption. We don't really have any of that assistance. And so the problem with a lot of this is trying to take information from one industry, interpret it, and apply it to another. And depending on who's teaching you this information, are they trying to teach you or are they trying to push an agenda? And I just think that the state of California's numbers really aren't too bad. And that with a little bit of adjustment into reality, it, it'll, it'll be an accurate system and a safe one. So if a farmer has cannabis that does test positive for mold or mildew or yeast, what are uh, their options? Uh, concentrate? Yeah, you can go concentrate with crudes distillates, uh, things that you're going to do an extract on where you can peel a lot of that out. I mean, if it's too covered in mold, no, but if it's, if it's just yeast and mold and stuff, yeah, you can blow it. And that those will come out in the extraction process. 